Hello everyone. Hope you're having a great Tuesday. Uh, it's uh, kind of rainy here. I'm, in, I'm at the campground today and uh, it, it's kind of raining off and on. So I, I was going to do this outside and I decided, well, I'll just do it inside just so it doesn't start raining on me when I'm, when I'm doing it. But uh, I did, we're here at the campground having a great time. I'm so proud of Mary. She's, she's doing her uh, bird nerd class uh, here for the kids and they're, uh, uh, they really seem to love it today and it's, it's great to be here to be her assistant. And I've just, just really enjoyed it and, and the kids seem to love it and uh, she just did such a great job. But uh, I did want to want to do our, our daily devotional today, and we're uh, dig digging deeper into Scripture, into Romans, uh, as we've been doing, uh, Bible.com, the YouVersion Bible app, and uh, so much good good truth here in, in Romans, especially these early chapters about our salvation, and we want to we want to dig deeper into it. Uh, again, the app re recommends you read this through four four different times. And so you can do that if you like. On the other hand, you you uh, you know can just just pay attention to to the devotional. But uh, uh, so much good, rich truth here. And I, I uh, especially today, I, I've always appreciated this this passage because I think it really shows Paul's humanity. Uh, sometimes we put some of these characters in the Bible up on a high pedestal, and we think of them as being you know having it all together and stuff. But but Paul today is going to show us that he's you know, he struggles. He struggles with sin. He struggles with, with doing what uh, God wants him to do. And, and I, I think we can all identify with, with that. I mean, our hope is, is holiness. Our goal is holiness. Uh, we want to be perfect, uh, but our reality is that we fall short sometimes. And so uh, Paul's going to help us with that, I think, really, in this, in this passage. It, it's a good one. Romans chapter 7, verses 7 to 25 He's going to continue his talk about sin and the law and uh, some of those kinds of things. Uh, you know how again he's he's talking about how we we really I think it's it has to do with working out our salvation and, and understanding what God has done and, and what He's doing in us uh, through our salvation. And so so let's dig into this this passage here, uh, Romans chapter seven, starting with verse seven, and then we'll go through the end of the chapter. What shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Uh, in other words, going back again to this argument, you know, he's talking about the sin and, and, and uh, the law and, and how it, it's, uh, uh, you know, we're not under the law anymore. We've died to the law in a way, uh, you know, and we, we're coming to life in Christ and we're living for Christ and, and that kind of thing. But he says, the law is sinful. And he says, certainly not. Uh, you know, it, it, this, the law itself is not, not sinful. Uh, he says, nevertheless, I, I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. Uh, in other words, you know, the, the law, in a way, taught him what sin was with all of its regulations, with all of its, you know, don't do this, do do this, and in those kinds of things. It, it, it made him aware of, of the sin in his life, the things that he was doing that, that he ought not do. He said, for I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said you shall not covet. In other words, the law taught him how to covet. And, and he says, that, you know, this, we, 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 well, his ne the next verse 8 says, but sin seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment. In other words, once he learned what it was, his sinful heart wanted to do that. And, and I think there's always this sense of, of wanting to do what we, you know, what we're not supposed to do. Uh, you know, I think of a, you know, a child, I, I was like that as a child and they don't ask my mom cause she could tell you lots of stories, but I always wanted to do the things that I was told not to do. In some ways I, I always thought with my girls, it might be better to tell them not to do the thing that I wanted them to do. So then they would do it. Uh, you know, <laughs> cause that's the way our, our hearts are a lot. And so what Paul's saying is here, I didn't know what coveting was, but then the law told me don't covet. And so that made me want to covet sin seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment. Now, I, I think there is something to this that there's a little bit of hyperbole here. I, I think that's what, you know, Paul isn't, you know, it wasn't like he was the world's worst coveter. Uh, and later, you know, another time he talks about how he's the worst of sinners. Uh, Paul wasn't that, uh, but, but it, it, the sin seized the opportunity. Now, now it's, it's interesting. Uh, well, let's keep, keep going here. Uh, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment produced in me every kind of coveting. 
For apart from the law, sin was dead. Uh, in other words, without the law, I, sin wasn't really alive in my life because I, you know, I wasn't aware of it, is what he's saying. Once I was alive apart from the law, but, then the, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. Uh, once I was alive apart from the law, he's talking about there probably when he was younger, before he was aware of the law. And we know Paul's background. He was a, you know, a, a really good Jew. And he knew what he was supposed to do, not do, and, and you know he was just the best of Jews. And so we know, you know, he was alive apart from the law. It was probably when he was younger, growing up, before he had learned the things that he should and should not do, uh, before he learned about the law. But he said, when the commandment came, when I learned about the commandment, when I learned what what uh, God wanted from me, when the commandment came, sin sprang to life, and I died. Uh, sin always leads us to death. It's just the you know, wages of sin is death. Uh, the, sin always, I mean, it may be good for a season. That's one of the things we'll talk about. Uh, I think we're going to talk about on Sunday. The plan is in the sermon is, is how, you know, sin, it, it, it can be very appealing to us. Uh, we're going to talk about it in the sense of, of knowing God's will. But, but it, when, when, sin is in our hearts it's in our lives it leads to death it leads to the down the path that we don't need to go that we shouldn't shouldn't go and and so he, verse 10 he says i found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death because you know this this sin i i learned i wasn't supposed to covet so i started coveting and that led me to death it, 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 it you know it sprang to life and i died he says and, and so what was intended to actually lead him in the way he was supposed to go, lead him to life, actually brought, brought death. Verse 11, for sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, deceived me, and through the commandment, put me to death. Uh, in other words, I, there was this thing going on. Like I said, I think there's some hyperbole here. I'm not sure how much, you know, but he's using it as an example to help us learn about how, how sin works in our life, how how, you know, the law is, has this way of, of, you know, it can lead us, you know, to sin, sort of, so to speak. Uh, sin, you know, seizes an opportunity whenever it has it uh, to, to uh, deceive us, you know, and, and then to lead us where we don't want to go. So he says, so then the, the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. There's nothing wrong with the law. There's nothing wrong with the, the commandment. It's holy and righteous and good. God gave it. Uh, he gave it to us to help us. We shouldn't covet. We shouldn't want, you know, what, what somebody else has. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the, the law. There's something wrong with us. There's something wrong with our hearts. Uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, we, we, we uh, uh, you know, we, we're, we're the broken, we're, we're where the, uh, I'm trying to think how to say, you know, sometimes we talk about like the, you're, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Well, we're the weak link in all this. It's not God. It's not the law. It's, it's us. Uh, so verse 13 says, did that which is good then become death to me? By no means. Uh, nevertheless, in order that sin might be recognized as sin, it used what is good to bring about my death so that through the commandment, sin might become utterly sinful. Uh, you know, the commandment, the law makes sin utterly sinful. In other words, it shows it, I think a good way of saying it is it shows it for what it is. Uh, sin is sin, and, and we shouldn't be doing it, and it shouldn't, you know, it, it, it has this hold on us, and, and it's, again, it's not, uh, it, it's not the sin, and it's not, it's not the sin's fault, really. It's not the, the, uh, the law's fault. It's the sinner. It's, it's, it's us. Um, uh, and, and it really wasn't, you know, that which is good. The law is good. That's not the problem here. Uh, he says, no, by no means in order that sin might be recognized as sin. It used what was good to bring about my death. And those sin worked its way into, to our, our hearts. Now, now Paul here, he's going to begin to get into his tongue twister. And it, like I said, I think it's, it's kind of like he's, he's struggling to explain it himself. And he's wanting to, us to understand what is going on in our hearts and in our lives when, when sin comes along. So verse 14, we know that the law is spiritual. Nothing wrong with the law. But I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. And remember we talked about before, 
again, he's, he's kind of going back and showing us what, what it's like when we're following our own way and going uh, away from the Lord, not living for the Lord like we should. We, we are a slave to, to sin. And, and so, you know, we belong to, to sin. And the, the hope is, uh, you know, when we put our faith in Jesus and, and we receive God's grace, then we become a slave to, to God. We talked about that a couple of days ago. So then verse 15, he says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And, and it's, it's this idea, he wants to be good. He wants to, to follow the law. He wants to do what God wants him to do. And it's this, this, you know, this, this battle is going on in, in him. Is if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is the sin living in me. And, and again, I, I don't think he's trying to let himself off the hook there. I think he's trying to show us the way that sin works its way, gets its tentacles into our life and into our heart and, and, and works its way into us and to, to pull us uh, astray, pull us in directions we don't, don't want to go. Verse 18, For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is in my sinful nature. Uh, he's saying, you know, we're, 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 we have this, this nature since a, the fall of Adam uh, and really every human being ever since has, has chosen uh, to sin against God. And, and we have this nature about us that we are drawn to, to sin. He says, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. I, I want to do what's right. I want to do what I, I should do, what I know I should do, but but I struggle with it. And, and like I said, it's one of the reasons why I appreciate Paul so much because he, he's trying to put into words here the struggle that we, we all often feel with sin. We, we, you know, we, we know, you know we really, the power of sin is gone in our life when we come to Christ and we give our heart to him. And, and holiness is all about that power, it, it, the power that it has over us being, being taken away. But, but we still struggle and, and we still have to, you know, keep, keep, keep turning to the Lord and looking to him to find uh, the grace that we need, the strength that we need to, to go on. He says, for I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Like I said, it's kind of a tongue twister here. He keeps kind of saying the same thing over and over again. I want to do what's good. I want to do what's right, but I don't seem to do it. Uh, the evil still has that, that hold on me. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who did it, but it is the sin living in me that does it. Now, this is kind of the second or third time he said that kind of thing. And, and so, again, it's, 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 he's just over and over. He's just trying to get the idea across. And like I said, I think that he's, he's, uh, he's struggling with how to say it. And, and so he kind of keeps saying it over and over in different ways and hoping that, that somehow it'll, it'll dawn on us what he's, what he's trying to say uh, or help us understand it. Is now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is the sin living in me that does it. Again, sin gets its tentacles into us. It takes us much further than we want to go. We, you know, we, we have a, uh, you know, this hope, this desire. We, we, we uh, uh, you know, we may think, oh, it won't hurt if I do just a little bit or do a little something that I shouldn't do. Uh, the reality is that it takes us much, much further than we want to go and drags us deeper. And, and sin gets its tentacles into us and, and, and we, we end up doing much more than what we, we think uh, we, we could ever do. Uh, it's sin living in me that does it. Verse 21, so I'm, and, and I think he finally, at least in my mind as I read through this passage, I, I think this, he finally figures out how he wants to say it, the, the ultimate point that he wants to make here. Again, he's, he's kind of going around in circles there a little bit. And like I said, it's kind of a tongue twister. You know, I do what I do not want to do, and what if I do what I want to do, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And then he said in verse 21, So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. Evil is always within arm's reach. Uh, it's, it, temptation is always there trying to pull me aside. Uh, he says, For in my inner being I delight in God's law. I love God's law. I want to read God's law. I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to follow his his path and he said i want to but it says for in my inner being i delight in god's law but i see another law at work in me waging war against the law of my mind 
in making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. In other words, there's this one sense, one part of me wants to do what's right, wants to do what God wants me to do, but there's this other part of me that still, you know, sin still has its tentacles in us. It still has its, its hold on us. And it, it, wants, it wants to pull me to the side. And it's just always, it's right there with me, always within arm's reach, always calling out to me, you know, a siren song or whatever, that, that it wants me. And he says, what a wretched man am I am. Uh, you know, how awful is this that I'm, I'm two-sided? I'm, I want to do what's right, and yet I keep doing the wrong thing. It's, it's still at work in me. This sin is still at work in me. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? In other words, what am I going to do about this? How am I going to make it through this? How, how am I going to, how can I focus on the good? How can I hold on to that? How can I pull sin out of my life and, and, and these tentacles that it has on my heart and my, my mind? What can I do, do about it? In verse 25, the ultimate, ultimate, he says, Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's getting at that whole idea of sin losing its power over us. If we truly and fully turn to the Lord and, and seek him and seek his way, if we are as close to the Lord as we can get, sin will not get close to us. It will lose its power over us. It's when we, when we move away from the Lord, uh, walk our own path, we, we get, you know, we, 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 uh, uh, move closer to sin. Sin's always right there with us. But but thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. His grace allows us, his salvation allows us to not be subject to death, to not let sin have its tentacles in our hearts and minds. So he says, that, so then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. And he says, this still, this is this battle going on, but, but thanks be to God, because he will provide the way for me to, to overcome that. He'll provide the way for me to be, to, for sin to lose its power over me, and I become a slave uh, to God, a follower of God, and, and more about what he wants. Well, let's, uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this passage that uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a struggle and yet it helps us to know how you want us to live and to, to leave sin behind. We don't have to be uh, a slave to sin anymore. We don't have to let uh, the, the law or whatever cause us to sin. We can look to you and find all the help we need to fight uh, the battle of, of sin. Lord, help us uh, today and every day to, to live for you as, as best we can. Lord, just be continue to be with us, Lord. We thank you. We, we, we praise you. Continue to be with those that need a touch from you, Lord. Encourage them. Strengthen them. Help them each and every day to uh, uh, just, just um, uh, well, grow closer to you. But more than that, gain strength uh, in those that are sick. Uh, be near to them. Thank you, Lord. Continue to help us with the coronavirus, Lord. Again, I, I thank you that the progress. Thank you we're able to have... Uh, kids camps this year and, and the kids and uh, are here and having a great time and learning about you and, and we thank you for that and we just ask your blessing on this camp uh, but be with us all thank you lord we give you praise we give you glory in jesus name we pray amen amen well thanks for watching today and uh, we'll we'll uh, be back tomorrow with a, a, another uh, uh, another devotional. We'll go a little further into to Romans. We'll get into chapter 8. But uh, you have a great rest of your day, and we will uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.